Who is Krishna? Some people may ask. There are numerous Vedic references that can be used to provide the proper explanations. To begin with, it is the Vedic literature that most clearly reveals the nature and identity of the Absolute Truth or Supreme Personality. One such reference is the first and second verses of the Vedanta Sutras. The first verse states simply that now one should inquire into the Brahman. This means that now that you have attained a human body, you should use your intelligence to discover what is really spiritual and what is the absolute truth. In other words, in no other form of life does the living being have such an opportunity. The second verse begins to explain what is this absolute truth. Quote, he from whom everything originates is the absolute. Unquote. Thus, as it refers to he, the source of all that exists, the ultimate point of creation is a person. The Rig Veda also continues, Him whose three places are filled with sweetness and imperishable joy, who verily alone upholds the threefold, the earth, the heaven, and all living beings, may I attain to his well-loved mansion, where men devoted to God are happy, for there springs the well of honey in Vishnu's highest step. Unquote. As explained in the Chaitanya Charitamrita also, Lord Krishna is the original primeval Lord, the source of all other expansions. All the revealed scriptures accept Sri Krishna as the Supreme Lord. Furthermore, it explains that Lord Krishna himself is the one undivided absolute truth and ultimate reality. He manifests in three features, namely the Brahman, which is the all-pervading spiritual energy, the Paramatma, which is the super soul in all beings, and Bhagavan. The Supreme Personality. The Svetashvara Upanishad also says that the Supreme Being, Lord Krishna, is worshipable by everyone, the one adorable God, repository of all goodness, ruler of all creatures, born from the womb in his pastime of Lord Krishna, in his uh, Vrindavan Leela, and for he is eternally present in all beings, as a super soul. Furthermore, it states, I have realized this transcendental personality of Godhead who shines most brilliantly like the sun beyond all darkness. Only by realizing him, one goes beyond the cycle of birth and death. Absolutely, there is no other means to get God-realization. End quote. The Shvetasvastara Upanishad 5 verse 6 also elaborates that Lord Krishna is the topmost of all the gods. Quote, He is the most esoteric aspect hidden in the Upanishads, which form the essence of the Vedas. Brahma knows him as a source of himself, as well as the Vedas. The gods like Shiva and the seers of the ancients, like Vamadev Rishi realizing him, Eva ever became dovetailed in his service, and therefore they naturally became immortal. End quote. And in 6 verse 7 it continues, Let us take our final resort at him, who is the transcendent and the only adorable lord of the universe. He who is the highest deity, over all the deities, the supreme ruler of all rulers. Him let us know as the paramount divinity. End quote. The Gopal Tapani Upanishad, which is about Gopal or Krishna, is quite clear on this point and naturally has numerous verses that explain the nature of the absolute truth and Lord Krishna. A few of such verses include the following. Quote, Brahma, with his full awareness, emphatically said, Sri Krishna is the supreme divinity. He who meditates on Sri Krishna serves him with unalloyed devotion and, rendering service to him, all of them become immortal and attain the perfection of life. Sri Krishna is that supreme divinity as the paramount eternal reality among all other sentient beings and the fountain source of consciousness to all conscious beings. He is the only reality without a second, but as a super soul dwelling in the cave of the hearts of all beings, he rewards them in accordance with their respective actions in life. Those men of intuitive wisdom who serve him with loving devotion surely attain the highest perfection of life, whereas those who do not do so never gain the, this highest beatitude of their lives. This Sri Krishna who is most dear to you, all of you, is the cause of all causes. He is the efficient cause of the creation of the universe as well as the superintending force for propelling the jiva souls. Therefore, although he is the enjoyer as well as the Lord of all sacrifices, he is ever atmarama, or self-satisfied. So, summarily, as it is explained and concluded in a variety of Vedic texts, 
Lord Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In other words, as it is said in Sanskrit, Krishna's two Bhagavan Svayam, which is from the Bhagavad Purana 1, 3, 28, which means Krishna is the source of all other incarnations and forms of God. He is the ultimate and end of all truth and philosophical inquiry, the goal or end result of Vedanta. He is the all-attractive personality and source of all pleasure for which we are always hankering. He is the origin from which everything else manifests. He is the unlimited source of all power, wealth, fame, beauty, wisdom, and renunciation. Thus, no one is greater than him. Since Krishna is the source of all living beings, he is also considered the Supreme Father and source of all worlds. He is shown with a blue or blackish complexion. This complexion represents absolute pure consciousness, which is also unconditional love. Krishna is the embodiment of love, or the god of love. He is also Satchitananda Vigraha, which means the form of eternal knowledge and bliss, for which we are all seeking. The reason why the Lord is called Krishna is explained in a book known as the Sri Chaitanya Upanishad, which is connected with the Atharva Veda. In verse 12 it is explained, These three names of the Supreme Lord, which is Hari, Krishna, and Rama, may be explained in the following way. Hari means he who unties the knot of material desire in the hearts of the living entities. Two, Krishna is divided into two syllables, which is Krish and Na. Krish means he who attracts the minds of all living entities, and Na means the supreme transcendental pleasure. These two syllables combine to become the name Krishna, or the greatest pleasure. And three, Rama means he who delights all living entities, and it also means he who is full of transcendental bliss. The Maha Mantra, or the Hare Krishna Mantra, consists of the repetition of these names of the Supreme Lord. End quote. In this way, Krishna's names represent his character and qualities, which in this case means the greatest and all attractive transcendental pleasure. So as we further our investigation of the identity of Sri Krishna in the Vedic literature, we find that they are full of descriptions of Lord Krishna as the Supreme Being. These actually can help us understand the nature of God, regardless of which religion we may affiliate ourselves with. So it is encouraged by, for every, anyone to study these Vedic texts to increase one's understanding of God and spiritual reality. If we are expected to understand God, then, no, then who better to explain his qualities and characteristics than himself? So, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna provides the self-revelatory truth about his position in his explanation to Arjuna. There are numerous verses in this regard, of which the following are but a few. And, as I quote, When you have thus learned the truth, you will know that all living beings are but part of me, and that they are in me and are mine. These sages, knowing me to be the ultimate purpose of all sacrifices and austerities, the supreme lord of all planets and demigods, and the benefactor and well-wisher of all living entities, attain peace from the pangs of material miseries. Of all that is material and all that is spiritual in this world, know for certain that I am both its origin and dissolution. He also says, I am the source of all spiritual and material worlds. Everything emanates from me. The wise who perfectly know this engage in my devotional service and worship me with all their hearts. End quote. So, from the small amount of Vedic evidence that is supplied herein, it is clear that Lord Krishna's name, form, pastimes, etc., exist eternally in the spiritual dimension and are never affected by even a tinge of the material energy. Thus he can appear as often and whenever he likes, as he is, or in any form he chooses within this material manifestation. He is completely and totally spiritual, for he is the Absolute Truth. As the Vedanta Sutras explain, the Absolute Truth is he from whom all else manifests. Thus the Absolute Truth is the ultimate person known as Sri Krishna. So I hope you've been able to benefit a little bit from this brief explanation and enjoy some of the pictures here of Krishna's various pastimes of Vrindavan, the land of Krishna where he took birth. And for those that want more information on this, you can find much more information and knowledge about Krishna and the uh, Vedic knowledge, spiritual knowledge, on my website at www.stephen-nap.com. Thank you very much. Hope to see you again.